The weather on this day did a complete 180 and pounded us with heavy winds and a 25 degree drop in temperature. I knew from the start that it would be tough with these conditions, but nevertheless, I was excited and optimistic. We're dealing with a pretty tough downstream wind here right now. Yeah. Um, and I thought it'd be a good opportunity to just talk about that for a second. When you're dealing with a big wind, we're, we're in, that, in that 15, probably gusting to 20 miles an hour. And, but there's a couple of things that you can do to deal with that. Now, I'm a right-handed caster, so for me, this is actually a very easy wind to deal with. I can, I can actually use the wind to my advantage to keep my fly ahead of my line, even at, even at longer distances. But if I was left-handed or on the other side of the river, I, I'm not gonna wanna make that cast over my left shoulder because it's, I'm gonna run the risk of that fly coming back and, and getting caught up in, in my body anywhere. So as a lefty, I can make, I can do one of two things. If I'm, if I'm casting a short line, I can keep the fly rod over my right shoulder and still make a decent presentation. Or if it was really bad, or if I was casting a heavily weighted rig, such as an indicator rig or a sinking tip, I can actually turn my body and cast naturally into the wind and then deliver my back cast. So those are two helpful tricks when, when you're dealing with especially strong and gusty winds. Now I'm gonna try and catch fish. Being versatile, particularly when conditions are tough, is vital to your outcome. We've gone through this pool with a dry fly. We haven't seen uh, a lot of fish rising, uh, but we did give it its due. Now I've switched to an indicator. We're seeing a mixture of caddis and mayflies coming off. So I've set up my indicator rig with, with a caddis emerger and a mayfly nymph. Uh, that's, that's appropriate to the size and color that we're seeing. Now, when I work a run with a nymph and indicator, I wanna try and get to the point where I'm setting the hook on every fifth or sixth cast. With the leader that I just had, I don't think I was deep enough, so I've actually lengthened my leader. Now I can make adjustments to my indicator and my weight to get to that setting the hook on every fifth or sixth cast formula which tells me I'm near the bottom and in the zone. I got a, I got a ridiculously long leader on here. It doesn't need to be this long, but it's just the way it worked out. Any angler will be far more successful when they become efficient with dry flies, nymphs, and streamer presentations. I've had good luck on a not real small, but not a, a big streamer. When trout fishing, remember this, trout and rivers will feed almost perpetually, but there will always be periods of low activity mixed in. Finding the right presentation during these periods may take some time, but the end result will be rewarding. There's a fish. It didn't hit hard. Could be a, could be a fall fish, not a big fish. Because it's if, small. If it's probably a fall fish. Okay. It's fighting like a... Yeah. It is. Oh. It's a salmon. Is it a little salmon? Yeah, looks it is like too. it. Yeah, he hasn't jumped, I'm surprised. Yeah, that's a little salmon. Yeah. Well, there you go. My first Kennebec ouch, or my first Penobscot River salmon. Not a big salmon, but it's a landlocked salmon. <laughs>